Angie Austin with Oil and Gas 360, and we're here at Intercom's 2017 Oil and Gas Conference. And we're joined right now by Gary Guidry. He is President and CEO with Grand Sierra Energy uh, Incorporated. Welcome. Thank you. All right, so uh, the conference, you're here, you're headed out to work some more, so kind of a brief break. Have you come to the conference before? Uh, no, this is the first year for us at Grand Tierra. Wonderful. Well, let's talk about uh, you know giving our audience some details about how Grand Tierra is pursuing the uh, new A limestone play at the company's legacy Costa Yaco oil field in the Putumayo Basin. Can you tell us about that? Yeah, it's uh, we found a, a bypass pay that, that uh, has been drilled through for, for several several years. And what we're using at Costiaco, and the reason we're, we're spending money on, on uh, evaluating the A-Limestone is the infrastructure's there. There's, a, there's an existing oil field ah. with existing capacity and the ability to, to very rapidly go in and, and test the A-Limestone in existing wells that have already been drilled. But also, drilling, we've drilled two new wells, uh, both horizontals, experimenting with, with technology um, and, and being able to rapidly do that without using existing permits and existing well pads and existing infrastructure. You know, for um, someone from the outside world, I think it's fascinating that you can take something that people have already finished with and go in and, you know, with new technology, basically do it again but better. Yeah, it. it uh, I, I think you find those opportunities all over all over the world. Cool. And as we looked at the the A limestone, um, th this big carbonate play, it's it's fairly extensive. We're just starting at Costiaco because of the the um, the existing infrastructure, being able to rapidly test it. But as we looked at, you know, quite a few wells that have been drilled in the basin and across the border into Ecuador. Uh, this, this play is, is pretty regional. Neat. All right, let's talk, uh, Grand Tierra has announced uh, exploration discoveries uh, recently in the Putumayo Basin in both the A Limestone and, and the N Sand. So please tell us a little bit more, uh, Gary, about your company's wells in the Putumayo 1 and 7 blocks. Yeah. So to give you a perspective, of, of over the last two years, we, we made four acquisitions. Three of those acquisitions were in the Putumayo to consolidate the, the, the play. And what, what's uh, very encouraging about the Putumayo is it's multiple stack conventional plays. Okay. So by that I mean the, the original exploration uh, campaign by Texaco decades ago okay. was looking for the very deepest Caballos formation ah. and the bottom of this, this Cretaceous Vieta. To get to that, they drilled through the very top, which is the N sands. They okay. drilled through the A limestone, the M2 limestone, uh, the T and the U. So they drilled through all of these horizons going after this big play, the, right. the, mainly the Caballos. And it told us a lot about, you know, round two and round three. The, the basin is underexplored because of the, the conflict with the FARC which has recently been resolved, the okay. peace treaty after decades of, of fighting. Um, and so it's the opportunity there is to go back and look at, at what uh, opportunities we know about, but also the ones we don't know about. So the, the two blocks you asked me about, they're 60 kilometers apart. Okay. And so if you look at our land base, we're 60 kilometers by about 60 kilometers. So we have about 800,000 acres and all of these different multi-horizon plays, the, the two discoveries that we had, the first two wells we drilled, uh, both in the U and the A limestone, with light oil and um, they're, they're, they're stratigraphic plays that we don't know how big they are. They, we know that they're regional. On top of that, we've not tested the, the end sands at the, the, the new Vanu discovery. Just recently, we, did, we just announced it, but we know there's oil there, and we'll, we'll eventually get to it and test it. And down in, in the Putumayo 7 block, uh, we, we, put the, we tested the U, we tested the A, we know there's light oil there, and we put the, the end sands on, on production. And so the exciting part is we have this massive land base, yeah, and there's, it's, it's underexplored because of the past conflicts, and 
Um, so we've got a pretty active program over yeah, the next Yeah, it sounds next pretty exciting. Years. Yeah, it is. Yeah. All right, this may cover some territory we've already covered, but more specifics. How does Grand Tierra's A limestone play in the Putumayo Basin compare to the North American resource plays that Intercom conference attendees are, might be more familiar with? I think the, the, the closest analog uh, would be part of the Eagleford. The, the Eagleford, the, the, people call it the shale. If you look at what's really been successful, EOG and some of the other companies that, that have the, the very high percentage of, of, of limestone, you know, 70 plus percent limestone versus 70 plus percent shale, or in between the marls. If you look at the, the, the sweet spots, they call it, we're in the, in the Putumayo, the, this carbonate play, the, the A and the M1, the M2 limestones, they're, they're 95% limestone. So there's, there's storage in the rock itself. Mm -hmm. And we're getting, you know, 500 to 2,000 barrels a day from vertical wells with just a little bit of acid, not massive hydraulic fracturing. And so I, I think part of the Eagleford would be an example. The, the best analog we have is the Golden Lane Field, the big carbonates in Mexico, or the big platform carbonates that you find in, in the Middle East, okay. where, where you're, you're drilling a conventional limestone rock that, that we're stimulating with, with just hydrochloric acid versus a, a, a big hydraulic fracture, so far. Okay. All right, Grantier has made a, a $525 million acquisition of Petro Latina last year into the middle Magdalena Valley base in Colombia. So what has Grantier done with these acquired assets over the last 12 months? Yeah, it's a, it's a very nice, the one big asset and land. The big asset is a field called the Acordonero field. It was on, on production when we, when we bought it and there was enough cash flow even at today's oil price, we're using that cash flow to fully fund the, the ramping of production from you know, four or 5,000 barrels a day. We're at 11,000 barrels a day today. We're going to 15 from cash flow. The, the other thing that uh, was, was part of that acquisition, and again, another carbonate play, the La Luna carbonate. And we have uh, one well on production in the, the, uh, the, the lands that we have. And we have a, an active exploration program in the middle Magdalena Valley as well. Sounds like quite an exciting endeavor for you all. It, it is, yeah. It, uh, it also diversifies the company yeah. a bit into another producing basin. We, uh, we produce you know, uh, 33,000 33, barrels a day today. We see from our, our asset base we can get to 40 and to the 40,000 barrel a day even at, at strip pricing, uh, because it's all conventional. It's all conventional reservoirs and mostly light oil, mostly in pipelines. So uh, that, that part of it is easy. But our, our, big, our big strategy in the country is to reinvest cash flow in exploration. We're, we're trying to drill you know, 30 to 40 exploration wells over the next three to four years regardless of what oil prices are. And that's why we've kept our, our balance sheet healthy and using using our debt capacity and cash flow to, to, uh, to execute that program. Excellent. Well, and you probably have to keep quite a wardrobe going back and forth between Canada and Colombia. You do. That's <laughs> quite extreme, the differences in temperature. Yeah, I'll say. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for joining us. Okay, thank you. I'm Angie Austin with Oil & Gas 360. And again, that was Gary Guidry, and he is the president and CEO with Grand Tierra Energy Incorporated. And we're at uh, Intercom's 2017 Oil & Gas Conference. Thanks for joining us.